Welcome back to uh, this old outboard. I got a new to me Stratus 295 Pro Elite. It's a 1999. It's got the 100% uh, composite hull. And I got an issue. Um, I was fishing the Spro tournament on Gunnersville and fished all day fine. The boat did well. However, at the last spot, my tilt trim pooped the bed and it would not budge. So I think I figured it out, but I just want to bring y'all along on my troubleshooting um, methodology, if you will. So what happened was the, the motor would not go up or down. So here are the two relays. Normally there is a cover plate here, a little plastic cover plate. You unscrew three bolts, it comes off. This is a fuse um, here, it's tucked in here, and then there's a spare. But these are the two relays for up and down. Um, what you want to check first is, is if these relays are, are bad. A good way to tell is if, if they're bad is you don't hear them clicking whenever you press the up or down um, trim switch at, I, I found it best to go up to the gear shifter and do it because if you use the switches here, they make a noise themselves and it's easier to hear or it's hard to hear the relays clicking so you should be able to hear these whenever i i um try to actuate the the trim up at the shifter up pressing the up one should be able to hear it clicking press the down should hear it click. So if you're, uh, if it won't go up or down, there's a fuse holder here. So there's a spare fuse. You can see that red T handle where my finger is, hopefully. And then you see this fuse here. Um, you'll need to check this, make sure you haven't blown a fuse. If you blew this fuse, it wouldn't go up or down. And there should be a spare fuse underneath it. That may be your issue. So if you do that and you hear them both clicking, the um, odds are pretty high that it is your tilt trim motor. And this is the motor that's probably going to need to be replaced. One more thing you can do is there is a plug here and this is the other end. It goes into here and hidden back behind here is a little bracket and that bracket has basically just a tang off of it and that tang slides into this slot right here and this is what kind of, that tang is what holds this connector tucked back in there you should measure on these two pins 12 volts across them plus 12 volts in one uh, actuating up or down and then the opposite polarity whenever you go the the other direction with the switch if if you get 12 volts here on this connector then the problem has to lie between this connector through the wires down through here there's a a little grommet down in there comes down through here runs through here into the top of your trim motor right there so to recap if you have 12 volts here the problem has to lie between this connector through the wiring all the way down to your motor. I measured 12 volts here, so I'm gonna replace my motor. I'm gonna buy a new motor. I did get this one off of eBay, and I'm gonna replace it. What you can do is take your two leads, plug them into there, go actuate your up and down switch. Have a friend hold this while you do that because this thing's gonna spin inside put off a lot of torque and it'll flop around everywhere if you don't but if that works then you've pretty much figured out that that it is your your motor so 
if it's your relays, just replace your relays. If it's your motor, it gets a little more complicated because we're going to have to take off this cowl here. Um, you have a connection point here, um, here, um, up there, and then through here, and I think that's about it. And the reason why you have to remove this cowling, this lower cowling, is you got to get the wires through the grommet through here. And it's really, I can't really show you, but it's down in there. So you have to feed these, these wires, you know, up through here, through this snakeskin shielding, through the grommet, and then re-undo this connector, and then slide these into that connector. To do this work, you gotta pitch your motor all the way up. Obviously, if your trim motor's not working, um, you're gonna have to do that by hand. There's this little port here that says manual release, and inside here is a little flathead screw. Um, let me see if I can show that. Maybe you can see it in there. It's a little flathead screw, and you can turn that counterclockwise and it'll release the pressure in the hydraulic system and let you raise and lower it by hand with relative ease. So you'll want to do that, pitch it all the way up, and then at a minimum you're going to want to flip down your manual catch here. Um, if not, try to support it down here somewhere you can. It's just a redundant safety mechanism this thing were to fall and you have your hands in here it's gonna be a bad day you'll crush your hands motors pretty heavy so just be aware of that next thing we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to remove this half of the lower cowl um, I can't really find any YouTube videos to that demonstrate how to do that so I'm gonna make one um, the service manual doesn't really um, detail that either so we're gonna just have to figure it out. So to remove this lower clamshell cowl, there's an obvious screw here. There's a screw here. There's this screw. And then there's this screw. Um, there are a couple of things that concern me maybe hard to see but this it looks like a vibration mount right there I don't know if it's attached it looks to be another one down in there it's really hard to see especially with the light so we're gonna just have to see what all's involved the service manual the OEM service manual just says loosen the screws and remove it so it's not very helpful but I'm going to take these screws loose and we're going to see where that goes. All right, so that was um, that one's um, that was a uh, rather easy. Actually, quite shocked by that. So so you had to remove a screw here, a screw here, a screw here and a screw here and then it just simply you pulled gently okay and it slid off this mount 
and then this mount right here so just be careful with all these wires hanging um, we may want to you know clean that up and, and look at that but this is what we're looking for is this right here and it runs through this grommet and this cable system that slides into this apparatus here what I did next was um, I cut the grommet the zip tie around the grommet um, and then I cut the ends off of the connector and then I kind of snaked the remaining wire out of the snake skin through here and then I pulled it out uh, through the other side so now we have all the wire going to the electric motor inside this area here now that we got the wires um, on the inside and the next thing we got to do is remove this pin and there are two clip rings here on either side of this pin you remove the clip rings and then you um, tap the rod out um, it's very important that you have your motor um, secured in the up position make sure that you know it can't slam down on you I'm gonna rig something up here to catch um, I kind of have this system here to where if it does fall um, it slides onto the hopefully on the trailer roller but I want to get something else here to support it just to have a lot of safety measures because this is a heavy motor all right so I got support here I got support on the other side with the manual um, mechanism that you rotate down and lock in the motor on the top side here it's down and then I got this that'll slide the hopefully that onto the roller it's a little bit of a risky situation there um, if it if it falls down but I think I'm I'm pretty safe um, all considering and now what we're gonna do is remove two snap rings here on either side punch that rod out and it will release this and then we'll be able to slide or pivot the hydraulic assembly over and reach the screws around this electric motor we may have to remove this pin down here I'm gonna go ahead and do that it's pretty simple um, there's just this little snap ring around here you may can get it with your fingers yeah it just kind of rotates slides off be careful don't lose that slide the don't drop it like I just did and yeah there it is put this back on the end of that ring and we can start take the snap rings off and remove that pin you'll need some snap ring pliers pretty common but just stick them in there gently slide it off don't lose the pin on the other side be very careful look at that yep where'd the ring go the rings fortunately I didn't lose them and look at this slides right out nice and easy and we saw this drop down and yeah now we can reach four screws on the on the back side right now what we'll probably want to do is clean out if you have a system that's really greasy or dirty you're going to want to clean out this area really well because when we unbolt this and we break this surface here um, you're going to expose the cavity that the hydraulic fluid is in and you don't want any debris in that area because there's check valves screens all sorts of stuff um, passages that that you know you don't want debris in and get clogged up and cause um, any more issues than you already have with a bad motor these fasteners are 
let's see, it takes a 3 8 inch socket, and they do have a cruise form for a Phillips head screwdriver. However, I just I think it's best to use um, a socket in this application so you don't risk stripping that out. Um, three of them are easy to get to, this one, this one, this one, and as you can imagine, the one on this back um, corner here is the most difficult one to get to. Um, hopefully we can get to it with um, being able to, with releasing just this pin up here and getting the room we need on the back side. Worst case scenario, we'll have to remove this pin and it's just, the, it removes the same as the upper connection with two uh, snap ring washers or clips and just slide the pin out. I'm gonna remove these screws and then I'll update you on this, this back one here. So I've got all the screws busted loose and sorry for the glare. Um, but you can see that I got just enough room to get back on that on that last fastener with a quarter inch drive socket, small socket, not your standard three eighths inch that you would typically grab, but get a small socket and you should have enough room and you're able to break it free pretty easily. Also always just be careful about debris during this step and you know, any paint chips or anything like that. Like I got paint chips and you know, a bunch of trash here I gotta be careful about. <clears throat> All right, so I have the last fastener here. It's the last one. Now, since this thing's been on there a while, you may have to take a, a rubber mallet and kind of tap on it until you get it. So you break it free. probably leak some fluid as well so don't do like I did and not have a bucket down there so there it is you'll notice this is the bottom of the motor there's a key here this key moves. This key will slide into a slot here. Now this, you can pull it out and replace it. Um, don't lose it. But you can position this slot to orient with your new motor here. So you can make them both go laterally. So whenever you put your new motor in, it lines up with that slot this key has to go into that slot for this to work and this is the area you want to be really careful and not get a bunch of debris in so this is why you clean off the edge um, before you remove this motor So your new motor should come with a new key here. Clean it off, I'm just gonna replace it. And why not? Also should come with an O-ring. Like to take a little bit of the oil, coat the O-ring so it gets a good seal whenever, uh, whenever you put it back on your, your motor. So here's the motor. You put the O-ring around it like such. I've already oriented my key. And the wires go on this side. So it's gonna go in like that. So I'm gonna reroute my wires here before I 
bolt it back down. When I got the wires um, pretty good and started, I'm going to go ahead and screw this back down. Make sure the bottom face is, is super clean, keys oriented in the right spot, and, and position it. So you may can see back there, but I've gotten it finger tight all the way down to the flange. Doesn't really move. I'm missing this one. Got that one finger tight and this one finger tight as well. That's what you where you want to get it finger tight. You don't want to just, on this one back here, you want to take your time, get it finger tight, use the extension without the ratchet and spin it until you get it all the way down. And uh, because you don't want to strip the threads in these housings, otherwise you got to replace the whole thing. And these are about three to five hundred dollars on eBay, the whole system. So take your time. This is the part you don't want to screw up. <clears throat> now we got it all tightened back down. Four screws are tight. Wires are plumbed properly snaked back through you want to get this protective sheathing um, where you want it and now we're going to put everything back so we're going to position this we're going to make sure we didn't screw anything up whenever we did that make sure our wires are where we want them to be oh one last thing i did forget something there is a grounding wire. I'm not gonna reposition the camera, but you can see it. This, it goes back on one of the screws and I didn't do that. So I'm gonna have to take a screw off and put this ground strap back on the screw. So we're gonna make sure we don't have any wires in a bind or anything like that. I'm gonna push this back up here. I'm gonna line her back up. Hopefully, she lines up if she sank while you had her disconnected you can take a screwdriver and gently pry her up get her lined up that way there we go jiggle it a little bit get one snap ring pry it open a little bit this is a tricky part because you don't want you may have to make it a little proud at first make sure that snap ring went back in that slot okay it's important do the same thing on the other side now what we got to do snake these wires through the sheathing may be easier said than done really don't want to take these connectors off so I may just have to do them one at a time that's what seems to be looks like I can make that work so now we got to put these connectors these uh, terminals I guess is the right word in this connector so to get um, these wires and these spade clips out of this connector um, what you got to do is on the inside there's a tab and you need a small little pick and you slide it in here right underneath that connector and push down at the same time takes a little de dexterity you pull out um, the wire so this one's still in 
so let's see if i can do it on camera so i'm gonna stick this in there find some it takes a little bit of practice but there we go so the trick is now you got to be smart go back here go find your your connector and and look at how it goes together so this little tang here this tab catches on the bottom whenever I put it in the connector and on this connector the bottom wire is the blue one so I'm gonna make sure that whenever I put this back in that the blue one goes on the bottom and it snaps in there like that blue ones on the bottom doesn't want to pull out the blue one on the bottom you put the green one back on the top make sure they don't slide out don't want them to slide out I don't know if this means that I have messed up the connector or what but once you get them in there like that probably not gonna replace that connector until I have trouble with it but that green one kind of wants to slide out but hopefully this little boot here is gonna apply the pressure I need to keep it in there this may be a bad idea but so now we're gonna make sure whenever you plug it back in you got blue on blue and green on green which we do now we should have power let's see if it works well, I forgot we have our manual release still open which was probably a no-no so what we got to do is I'm going to take this time I'm going to tighten that back down and I'm going to fill it up with hydraulic fluid first All right, so I filled it up with hydraulic fluid. I've tightened down the manual release valve on the other side, what we did at the beginning of the video. And now let's see if it'll pump it up. So there, it wants to do it. So we have successfully fixed our problem, but now we got to put everything back together and button up all of this. So I'm going to film that too, so it may help you out as well. One thing I did do is I disconnected this. It's kind of in the way, but so we're going to button everything back up make everything look good clean stuff off what's going to be real fun is getting the that lower cow lip back in this groove here so stay tuned all right so you got the motor back in you got the lines routed everything looks good um you got the motor all the way up you have your safety mechanism down what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fill the reservoir back up because you probably lost some fluid during the swap so you're going to unscrew this cap i've already done this um, you're going to unscrew this cap you're going to buy 
Um, it's easier if you use one of these tubes of tilt trim fluid and you squirt it in there until you see fluid coming out of the hole and then you cap it back cap it back down really tight once you have it tight you're then going to exercise the motor up and down about five times i've already exercised this motor got it um, kind of all the air out go all the way down go all the way back up as far as you can do that five or six times and then move it to the full up position again actuate your your lock unscrew this add some fluid if needed cycle again and that should get the system pretty well bled all right so i've got the system bled got all my connections back um, everything looks good so now what we're going to do is reassemble the cowling here and get everything squared away and put it back together so the uh, first thing you want to do is reattach your rubber grommet here to the slot in your cowling. <clears throat> After you do that, you just gotta make sure that all your wires are clear and there are two pins one right here and one right here and they slide back in these two uh, big I think they're vibration oscillators could be wrong but there's also a groove in this gasket here between the power head and the mid unit and that groove goes along the edge of of this interior edge of this cowling so you gotta line that up so just take your time doing this part and make sure you you get it right So I guess I should mention before you do that, you just want to reconnect your uh, trim unit connector to its little tang here. It sits on a little metal clip. You can see that metal clip right there. So just reinsert that connector as you see there on that clip and then start reassembling the lining up that pin right there and that pin right there to these holes on your your cowling so you can see the two pins right there a little better Once you got it on there, just go and make sure that you know you don't have any wires that are pinched. Everything looks, you know, like it fits together snugly. Push on that interface, make sure it, you don't have a gap there. Um, go back to the back end, push the two interfaces together, make sure that they go together so whenever you screw it in, um, everything will, will line up. So that one starts and we'll check that one and make sure it starts just make sure you don't have anything crimped pinched or or in a bind all right last thing we need to do is put this cover back on i'm gonna lower the motor make it a little easier <laughs> So 
So it just goes on with three, three screws here to three um, points here. So make sure if you had to remove any of these, these connectors that you reassemble everything before we put this back on. But goes on pretty straightforward like that. If this video helped you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Check out my website, thisoldoutboard.com, and make sure to share this with friends and whoever you think it might help. Thanks for watching.